introduce yourself using the Q&A section. This is going to be another session that we are going to talk about uh, the sensors and the actuators. And today we're going to talk about the, the buzzer and the water sensor. So kindly hold on, we'll begin uh, this session shortly. Uh, today, of course, we are going to go ahead uh, from the lesson where we left last time, it is a continuation of what we had last time uh, on, on sensors and actuators. Remember, we talked about input and output. So input majorly is played by the, the sensors because they are the ones which are supposed to be able to detect, uh, they're supposed to detect the problem. And then definitely they are the same, same ones now. Once they they are able to, so they play that role of uh, of being more of an input devices rather than an output devices. So the sensors bring in the information, the information is processed. Then we want to bring the actuators now to probably uh, do or act or probably implement some bit of tasks based on the feedback that they are getting from the uh, from the sensors or based on the information that are coming that's coming in from the sensors so we've really been able to look at a couple of sensors and today we want to look about uh, look at uh, uh, not only the sensor but we want now to bring in uh, the aspect of having two things work together the water sensor and the buzzer and we want to see what would happen if the water sensor and the buzzer were put together and remember i think last time we were talking about uh, this issue we looked at the water sensor at large and maybe what did we say about the water sensor we said uh, it is very easy to connect it because it only has three connections or three pins one uh, one of the pin will go to the ground that is particularly the negative and then the plus definitely is supposed to go to get to the power five volts uh, from the Arduino board and then we have the green one this is the one that brings in data uh, it's written S uh, so if you get to see the S uh, know that uh, you are now having so it's green in color and that's why I want to put green here so it's green in color this is the one that is used to bring in the data especially when it is dipped in water so I'm imagining if it is in in inside probably a glass of water right all right sorry sorry here it's inside a glass of water and water the way the water level is is here is how uh, it now takes these levels and moves with them so it's upon you to decide what level do you want to where do you want to indicate uh, probably low maybe it's, uh, here you can say it is low and then when it reaches here what do you say probably here we will say this is okay or medium uh, okay in the middle so in the middle and then probably here now it is high when it passes here then it is so high and when it is very high definitely there must be maybe it's going to pour or probably it is going to waste or it's going to be a problem so you need to to use that's how we are looking at the water sensor and that's the work we're going to do today even in our pro project today we're going to have the water sensor dipped in water and remember last time i think we had programmed it to an extent that we it was able to indicate using the the monitor uh, using our monitor it was able to indicate that uh, it is it is either low or high so today we want to add just a buzzer so when it is high meaning there's danger meaning there's something that can happen so what do we do in that case therefore we want to add a, a buzzer so that the buzzer is able to uh, be used to to tell or to turn on uh, to be able to warn because the buzzer is what we're going to use today. Now let us look a little bit about the buzzer. That is what I want us to look at. The buzzer. What is this about the buzzer? And uh, 
Simon, there is a session here. Yeah. Simon is asking whether there is a session today. Yes, there is a Duino session today. Wah, 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 wah. So you didn't get web, webinar meetings and meetings. OK. Um, Simon, there is a meeting today, and I think uh, let me just uh, probably get you think the link for Arduino was also supposed to have been sent. Wow. How come we did not send it to the team? If it did not come, then it is just a small mistake. But there is, it was, there was something sure. Let me just work on that. And of course, uh, I thought Simon, let us reply here that yes, there was a meeting today. Great, so I think uh, that is good. I thought probably you had been told. Okay, let us get to the buzzer and look at the different buzzer we are talking about. Uh, sorry for just that. I think I was responding to a message from one of the members that uh, inquired whether we had a meeting today. Great, so look at uh, what we have here. We, we are talking about the buzzer. This is what, these are what we're calling the buzzer. It's one, and you can see the difference. There's one that has the behind, that, that the base is covered, and the other one, the base is not covered. You see, these are the two types of buzzer that we have in the market. And these are the two types that come with the Arduino kit. When you get to find the two, coming in. Of course, we have the jumper wires. That one is obvious we talked about. Of course, the USB cable that connects to the Gones Arduino to the computer. But majorly, I want us to look at the, the buzzer, buzzer, the buzzer. The buzzer specifically uh, is used to be in many applications, especially when you want to do the warning. When you play tones, that really is warning. It's in almost every in every computer, when there's a problem, you'll hear the computer making some sound. When there's, it is starting or there's wrong start, or wrong connection, any error that you can see always is alerted using uh, the buzzer. And that's what we want to use today. That what about if the water is full, how do we uh, bring in? And, and maybe back again, um, just let me take you back and again, and you can see this is, there are two types of buzzer. We've talked about the one that the base is covered and the one that the base is not covered. The one that base is covered is called active, and and the sound is a bit uh, annoying when it <laughs> it's active because it makes a very clear sound, a clear tone. While the passive one, this one is usually the passive one. It is not as annoying. It has probably just a click sound, just a click like. Mm. So whenever there's a problem, you'll always feel here, okay, have that do some, some sort of a sound like that. So we are going to, to see how do we connect the, them to the, any of the Arduino, uh, any of the, the buzzer, you can connect it to the, to the, to the, to the board, or the breadboard or to the Arduino using the two pins. Remember, it only has two pins. One of the pin is positive and the other one is negative. So, and how do you determine which one is positive and negative? Two ways. One, um, when you get the buzzer, there is a small sticker on top of the buzzer, and that small sticker indicates it is it is it corresponds to one of the one of the pins. Indicates plus, so you'll see certain plus on that sticker. If it's not on the sticker, when you remove the sticker, even uh, on the board itself, on the on the on the on the piece itself, you'll find it is plus I'm showing you mine through the camera shortly so that you're able to see all these kinds of uh, stickers we are talking I mean the, the the way we are able to determine the polarity of the buzzer otherwise it is some of them is very hard to know but again another way or another better way of using you can use the length of the pins the pins the legs or can you see the legs the pins um, normally you'll find that in the pins one it's longer than the other. The one which is longer is usually the positive. In these small gadgets, you'll always learn that the one which is longer is usually the one that is uh, considered as the pin. 
the positive or the, the the positive one that's the one you really connect even in when you're using led remember we're talking about the one which is longer and that's the one we are using uh we have to see as that is a positive one so today we are going also going to see how do we get to understand which one is to be connected to the positive side and which one is the negative side so you see in this case the yellow is the one that's connected to uh, the pin a digital pin because it's a digital pin connected to pin 12 that's what we will also be doing and then of course the other one is ground the black one is ground so this other one is positive and the other one is negative but now this, the positive one is the one that is going to be able to be instructed to be programmed and therefore we connect it to pin 12 that is how we have seen so it is very easy to connect the pin the the, the buzzer pins and i want you to try it's very easy to do that I'll give you probably a break somewhere along the line so that we get it. Now back again to the types of the buzzers. I think I've talked about the passive and the active. And the difference is just basically on the base. You'll find this one is not broken. So when you buy it and you find those places, I think the photo here is not really showing well because it's like it's showing as if there's some kind of damage that took place, but it is not like that. It is usually very fine. This is left intentionally to show the difference between the two buzzers. One is active, which is fully covered. This is the one that makes a lot of noise. And the other one is passive. And even if it even and look, if you look keenly on the board, you can see the polarities is written. This other one is written minus and this other one is written uh, plus. So you are able to tell which one is the positive and which one is not, uh, which one is negative. So it's very easy. So you don't need to really be bothered to find out now which pin will I hook where. Because most in most cases, that is usually the biggest challenge uh, for many, um, many, um, many, many newbies, people who are new in this, they always find themselves, they always find it so hard to connect the Arduino. And they just say, probably, how do I connect this component to the Arduino? Because probably they are they're having a problem with the polarities or with the, the pin. They don't know what goes where, but this is very easy. In fact, even on the on the active buzzer, I think there is a small indication here that shows probably this is minus and probably probably there's another one here that shows this is plus. But I've said the best way is to look at also the length of the pin. If the pin is long enough, then that one is usually uh, or longer than the other, then the one which is taller or longer than the other is the positive uh, pin. So I think this is very clear. Maybe, I don't know whether we can take time to look at, if at all you have it in the in the kit, you can have a look at it and then you can really come to see this. Great, I think it's not bad to look at now, how do we connect? How are we going to connect? As usual, we've said in our project, we are going to connect uh, the positive, the negative side on the ground, and then the positive side, we are going to put a wire connecting it to pin number 12. So we are going to use pin 12. And what are we going to use pin 12 to do so that we enable this to be able to, to work? So probably, um, maybe we need to, once you've connected like this, so I want you to connect, uh, and I'm also connecting mine on the, on the table here. Once we connect, uh, and let me show you as I'm connecting, probably you can be able to see. Um, so that you're able also to make, uh, to see for yourself. What happens when, uh, okay, let me get probably a video. So that you're able to see. Uh, let me move. Probably oh, uh, from the side will be to see. Not clear, but we're talking about the 
and probably let's just bring the whole the whole screen network may not be good enough if you're able to see the whole screen now and uh, this is our water sensor the one we'll be using of course this is the arduino as we have we've always talked about it uh let me get something to point maybe a pen Wait, so say this is going to be the water. This is a water sensor. Uh, let me get the photos clear. In this. So this is the water sensor we've been using, and uh, we are going to combine the water sensor and the the, the buttons here. Uh, this water sensor seems not to the cable is not really well put, so it's disturbing them. Why should it be stable? Okay. Doesn't want to stay straight. Okay, no problem. Uh, okay, that is the is the water sensor, and you can see the lines on how this is this is what how it detects that uh, there is probably the water levels as they move along this, we are able to detect and give information. But what I want to talk about is basically the the, the buttons. You see I have three buttons here and out of the three you'll see that this one and this one they have the back open while this one which is uh, the back is, is a bit close covered and therefore it means that this one is the this is the active buzzer and this is the passive buzzer active and passive so you can do this uh, look at them um, and then okay. I think maybe don't worry it is shaking camera is shaking and I think it is easier to see from here that um, then how do we determine you can see the length you can actually see the length of the buzzer and you can see one is taller and one is shorter that the length of the pin the buzzer pin that the longer one is the positive one and the shorter one is usually the negative one so when you, you're going to, to connect ensure you remember now with this other kind you'll always see it on top of it uh so let me bring it closer to the camera so that you're able to see all right so you always see it yeah you can see the plus yes you can see the plus button the section which is plus you can always see it there that one tells you that the pin under it is the positive one because that's the one that is plus so it's very easy to find out which part is plus which part is minus so you are, you are able to, to tell the polarity of, of that so i think maybe uh it's very easy and then when we are connecting definitely we we'll say that uh, we'll connect we will start with this, uh, the active one, so that we we'll be able to get. Meanwhile, let us first of all disconnect the water sensor, and then we just use the active one, and we're going to use the maybe the first pin here or the line ten, the row number ten, and remember the longer one is the other side. So once we fix it on the the board like that uh, once we fix it on the board uh, like that then we okay then now next is to connect of course we know this is number 10 so this is the positive one we connect to pin number 12 we say that one will go to pin number 12 And then uh, we need to get another cable. Ah, this one should not be black. Let's use the red cable so that it's easy. So that it is easy. Let us use the red cable. So we connect to pin number 12. And then ground is. Okay. 
Now this one goes to the ground. And ground and the Arduino. I think I got some ground. Okay, great. Now that the connection is ready, I think it's because it has found some program which was running. Now let us go to the Arduino software and try and program this uh, this buzzer so that we see how is it programmed. Remember. The same approach which I want us to use is the same same approach we've been using so far. Let me just uh, remove uh, that and 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 take this to live so that at least you I take you back to the the screen. Yeah, so at least you are able to see. So here we are again. This is how we are doing making the connection. I hope you are connecting with me. Uh, the space for you to ask questions are uh, there, so you can ask Q and the Q and A kindly. Ensure you ask questions so that we are able to see uh, what you are saying. Great. So let us get you to the Arduino software. That's what I wanted so that uh, uh, we get things done. So that is the empty software and as usual, let me uh, probably make the writing big. I don't know whether I just need to increase the font so that it's easy for you to be able to see it coming out clearly. Uh, so it's big enough. Uh, Uh, it's big enough. So, so there we are. Now we want to, as usual, we know that the buzzer has been has been hooked in. Uh, pin 12 so we just write int and we know it's, we are talking about the buzzer and we have hooked it in pin number 12 so we just initialize that or rather we declare that variable and as int and then we put it there in pin number 12 then we have what do we set up remember as usual here we're talking about setting the mode of the pin so the mode of which pin the buzzer pin and how do we want it to be? We want it to be an output, remember, an output like that. So we are done and good. So once we know that's the output, so what do we do with it? As usual, we just come and say, uh, because now it's digital, right? Because it's, it's, let us use the digital, right? Remember this, it's a very, very important code. Digital, right? What do we want to write? So digital write. Then remember when the code turns color, it means you are actually writing it well. So what do we want the buzzer to do? So we can say buzzer high. Remember it's either high or low. And if I just then we must have probably then you have to give a delay a delay of 500 and then or put delay of 1000 okay then um you can copy and 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 just paste there and then oh this is in brackets sorry because the 1000 millisecond which is one second, definitely. So we are expecting that to, to really do that. 
So uh, terminating this. So once the code is now ready, let us verify our code. Uh, save it as buzzer. Uh, you'll always be asked to save. Uh, let me save that and then let me verify the code. So we are verifying the code and like, wow, the code is good. Therefore, if it's good, let us look at the tools, whether the Arduino is connected in the port. Yes, well connected. Now, let us now upload to the Arduino. So if we upload it to the Arduino, now you can see. You can hear it. Yes. It's just doing what? So. Delay? No delay. Uh, so. Oh, it is writing hi, hi, hi. Remember, look. Hi, hi, hi. If you wanted to turn off, we put that low. Yeah, uh, so. So then verify and send. Now that's how we debug. We get a ha. Now we can see it is for one second and hi. No. Hi. No. Hi. No. Hi. No. Hi. No. Hi. No. So that is that is what this is supposed to do. That is the buzzer, and you can hear the way it's so annoying. That's the active buzzer. When we replace it with an act, passive buzzer, you'll hear the noise is not the same. It's different. So that is the code for the buzzer. Another type of coding, uh, there are people who like not instead of using digital write, they just there is a function in this, this there is a function in uh, in in Arduino called tone. So instead of writing uh, buzzer high, because high and low will only give you one standard kind of uh, tone, but if you use tone, there are different tones. And you see, people have even used in their project to, to sing a song, like Arduino, like the to the buzzer can sing. You can use it to co to to really come up with the first stanza of the national anthem, as I've seen people even writing tone. So if if we put here a tone like 500, I don't know what that one sounds like, and then maybe I can even change this to 400 so that it is. And then now instead of saying digital write low, because remember we are using tone here, we are now saying no tone. Okay. No tone for the buzzer. We don't need to write low. This is already a function. This is the one that people use. You, if you want to have uh, uh, probably, let me reduce the number of time so that we can be able to hear, or even if I was to leave it the same way, uh, delay. Five hundred. Uh, sorry. That noise. Don't worry. It will stop. And then we are given appropriate tone. So what is the tone here? The tone, which we are. Uh, let me verify the code and listen to the tone. What? How does the tone five hundred sound like? That's how the tone find 500 sounds like. That is how you can hear. That is tone 500. Leave alone the speed. What about tone 450? Verify. Let us hear what tone 450 is like. It has upload. So you can see. Do, do, do. So you can now look for do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. You can do that using the buzzer. And that's what other people have been able to do. So once you just get the number, I don't know whether 1000, what would turn 1000 look like? So we save and we upload and see what does 1000 sound like that's how 1000 sounds like so you have two options either use the warning tone which is just basically you are digital writing it or digital digital writing it high 
or law or stuff like that. Now I want us to, to now add the water sensor. Remember last time we were working with the water sensor and therefore we want to add the water sensor to the mix and see what really uh, can happen uh, with that. Remember again, water sensor, if you can remember very well, um, we had, uh, let me just either bring it. Did we have the water sensor? Uh, the, the, I think what we had programmed last time is what uh, probably let me, let me look for so that uh, we work with it. Uh, yeah, we can even go to file, open recent, a water sensor. Uh, is it really there? No, but okay. Or or let us just let us just connect. And now we have let's from the buzzer. Now let us just add again the water sensor because seemingly that is a bit corrupt. I was not able. So always remember to save your files because uh, apparently it's not it's not working. So here we are going to get 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 the water sensor and uh, let me use capital sensor. So that is and we are going to hook it to. Remember we said it's an analog device. So to A. Five. We are going to hook it to A5, and uh, that is exactly what I'm doing. Remember, it is the S that we are going to hook to A5. So let me see where that one is, and then if we hook to A5, what will we be doing with the water sensor? Then, of course, the water sensor, when we come to setting the modes, the water sensor will now set this let's say pin mode of the water sensor uh, double O. So pin mode of the water, now here the water sensor. Um, water sensor, we are going, this is an input. Remember, is the one bringing signals from outside because it's testing the waters and bring. So we have already step two, we said step one, is to always uh, try as much as possible to um, let me make this look a bit neat to first initialize or define your variables probably telling the where you're going to use the the pins it's good to tell arduino especially where the pins will be so that the, the program runs knowing especially you're going to use pin a5 or pin 12 because there's a possibility if you just put 12 here or you put five A5, we may not be able to tell what are you really using the A5 for. So it's good to use it like this so that we, it's very easy for you to, to use it down here. And then we said that sometimes this input for us to be able, or sensor, it's not sensor, sorry. For, able, for us to be able to look at it, we said we can make use of the, the serial monitor. Serial monitor, we said, is usually the one that helps you to be able to look at things from behind the scene where uh, maybe you are not able to see from the eyes what is really taking place. Sometimes you don't know exactly what is taking place from behind the scene and that is what we want to use. And then even today we want to use this to be able to help us uh, work on make, create something. That's what we said. Now when we came to this section, when we come to this section now we want to get the water level. What is the water level? like so probably we can have an int that is just for the uh, the water level and we say it's going to be called water level and then the water level is going to probably read the readings uh, from analog reading from the water sensor this one is going to read what is happening at the water sensor analog read remember digital write, analog read, analog write. These things we said you must, you must really. Uh, so we, we said this is called water sensor. That is what we have. That is the, so it's going to read the, the, the inputs. What is coming from the water sensor? What is the water sensor reading? That is what this water level is. And then therefore we said, then we are going to use this variable called water level and say if the water level is on a particular level. So we said, we use if statement if uh, if our variable which we are calling water level in bracket of course if what happens water level water level 
is less than 100. Uh, we said we had already done all this, so I'm just repeating so that you're able to see what should we do because there's, then there's that block of, of, of uh, I think here what you just need to, to write is not to, it's just probably serial print, you just print in the serial and uh, let us use the serial definitely so that we look at it, that print line. Capital, sorry. Yeah, it's changed good well. So we want it to indicate that the water level is low. So we say water. Uh, let me type it well. Water level is empty because there's no, probably there's no water in there. In the in in the in the in the in the tank, so water level empty. That is what is going to write. So water level in empty. That's we expect it to write like that. So let me copy paste this, uh, and then probably yeah, so that we have uh, so. Okay, so that we 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 paste it down here again down here so we just want to have like uh, how many levels we can put uh, three levels remember so it's either low we can put here low water level is low and then water level is high so we want our sensor to be able to say the water, uh, because this is just a sentence to be read by a human being, so you don't need to put a lot of, then if, 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 because the first if is here, the second if, we don't just put if, but we say else, because it's the next if, else, if, and then of course the other if also is an else, if, so that we know there are else. And then here we are talking about water level is minus 100, this one is, it is more than 100, and, but it's not, sorry, sorry. It's more than 100, but it is not. Uh, and we can say, and again, and again, we can say, but the same water level, it's not greater than, or equal to 300 just it's less or equal to 300 then what should happen that one should say the water level is low what about if it is more than now 300 let us just say if it is 300 probably more than 310 or less 310 so that we we don't really mix because when it's 300 you can find it confusing whether to say high or low so you give an allowance there so that if it is more than 310, it should be able to say hi. And then remember now, we are bringing our tone here. <laughs> so today we, so that's where we now want the buzzer to create. And I think what we need to use here, uh, when it's high now, the buzzer should now sound, okay? The buzzer should sound. The, and I think every other, let it test because so that it doesn't write this all of a sudden fast, we can create some little delay here of, of 1000 of one minute so that it types it and gives us one minute. Sorry, I'm going to stop shortly just to, to fix everything so that we are able to see what really happens. So, Again, here we are going to put a delay of 1000. So when you are coding, you begin because, uh, yeah, here there is already a delay. So we can, we can want it, I think maybe instead of using the no tone, let us just use, so it's a warning, it's a very, very uh, digital write. Let us use the digital, the digital write. 
digital right then we are just saying the buzzer we want it to be high okay then we don't want it just to be high but we want it to make a delay of five five or or after 500 seconds half a second and then again and then turn uh, sorry for this it's very easy to 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 forget that but never 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 forget if you don't forget this is not a very forgiving language like others like html very forgiving but c is not forgiving if you make any mistake it will just uh, it will write so that we want it uh, to put it off to put the buzzer off so remember this one is uh, say low great then probably put another delay here of 500 so i think that sounds good so we are going to push it oh there are mistakes where now we start uh void setup so here we didn't put we didn't indicate that that is usually the most uh, so when we verify now it is okay and then we can now upload and when we upload uh we're using a5 as usual now let me see where do we get we need to power the why is, we have not yet even put it on the water so i think maybe there's a problem here wait a minute so so the white one is already there so the red one goes to the red then the other one goes here so because it is low it won't really so i'll be showing you what we are having so and i'll also open the monitor because remember the monitor shows the water level is empty it's now showing the water level is empty remember so it's the program is running but there's no water so uh let's get let us get the the camera so that we the camera at the same time so that particular point we are able to see the screen plus the camera yeah it's going online uh, it's coming so yes so you can be able to see uh, the one and then why the camera is having a problem yeah probably yes you can see the word and uh, let me just send it again try sending so the camera may have a problem so let us try again and again i show empty but let me just add water I can add water so the send is a problem but no problem we will copy until we get either the camera to work or uh, we just keep trying but all in all uh, let me now try it putting water let me put the water sensor in the water 
and as soon as uh, the sensor touches the water, it's, the reading goes low on the screen. You can look at the screen as the reading is going low. When it goes high, you can hear the buzzer making noise. When it's low, the buzzer has stopped. Now high, high, it, take, it really shows the alarm that, hey, the water is high. When it's low, again, low, there's no problem. The water is low, it's okay. And uh, there's no problem with the water when it's low. And then when it's also empty, there's also no problem when it is empty. And soon it's going to be empty uh, when we remove it totally and dry it up. It is going to read empty. So once it reads, yeah, so you see it started reading empty. It has started reading empty. And as it reads empty, uh, you can be able to see uh, that uh, now the same thing is corresponding. So I think maybe it's good to learn. We've learned a lot today that uh, you can use the buzzer. You can combine a sensor and an actuator to be able to come up with a project. So this can be as a warning. You can. It's not hard to incorporate it in your project. As soon as it says hi, definitely detects and gives the hi as uh, the information. The buzzer turns on. As you can hear, you can remove it or well, reduce it, and then it's a bit low. When it is low, there's no problem. When it is high, it gives the warning. So, so putting it so deep, then removing it a bit so that it's not so much deep, it says low, and then once it is outside completely, then it says empty and you can see that i think um it sounds well let me now answer your questions because i think time what's the role of serial begin statement i think uh, i've said the serial begin statement is just for you to be able to monitor what is happening sometimes when the sensor is working sensor will always be bringing in data but that data you cannot be able to look at it unless you have it printed you have arduino to print it uh, somehow on the on the monitor inside i mean the monitor it's like a monitor you're monitoring that because not all projects will require that you use um that you use a display probably you want to use a display you want to have it uh, fixed on a display so that you're able to see the thing there but you see there are many things that are taking place behind what comes to the display may not be exactly what uh, you want people to see so in most cases, you can use the serial monitor to be able to monitor some of the things. It is when it works in the serial monitor that you now think of putting it on the display. Like now you see, we have, once we have seen now, we can it can be able to write water level empty. Then this kind of information, we are going to take it and use it uh, and even display it in the 12 of, remember we talked about the 12 of 02 uh, or no, 1602 display lcd display now this information you can be able to push it there or this information now you can be able to push it to the mobile phone so that somebody can be able to check the level of the water using their mobile phone it will be right it will just be indicating empty but if you are near to the near the, the where the waterfall or the water point is or the water tank then you can be able also to listen to the buzzer warning that hey the water is high and therefore you need to take action so i think i've, I've grabbed that so you you it's it's a very good tool tool you need to learn it serial monitor is a very good tool you need to learn because it's going to help you a lot serial begin it's just to initiate the serial monitor and where we get the serial monitor we said at at the corner somewhere i think when we were talking about the arduino uh, software we talked about that particular part of, of the arduino and, and let me just uh, try and, and get you exactly where the serial monitor can be found. Remember, when we're talking about Arduino, uh, we talked about the, the Arduino software, we talked about the serial monitor, and I hope... Uh, so, probably, if I can get it very fast, I'll be able to show you so that you're able to see where the serial monitor actually resides. 
it is um i hope it, this one is doesn't come out very small uh right so so uh, maybe that's not the one we are dealing with so so let me end that so that at least i show you this other one uh that has the serial monitor so that section of the serial monitor is very important you're going to use it you will really need it you will need it because sometimes you really need to uh, do a lot of work and you want people to be able to see uh, what you are doing so this is where the serial monitor lives uh, it's here in this corner so when you click on that that thing or even if you go to tools you are able to also open it up so that you're able to see what is happening behind the scene what is actually happening from the sensor you can be able to get the readings of the sensor find out what is really happening with the sensor it's just like doing so, so much pretest without really getting into so many details and find out online what more you can do this is just a short see some handle of uh, such here but in most cases i think in the in the arduino software itself uh, there are many ways of getting it i think i've said at the corner as you've said and then we also talked about uh, even when you go to tools and you, you'll find serial monitor always also there serial monitor also is at the tool section so remember to take that on and be able to use it i hope i've answered the question and thank you so much for asking the question uh what's the role of um serial dot begin is just the one that initiates uh, the serial monitor so that the monitor should be able to start monitoring for you what is happening on the background and it's be able to it's going to be to to display so it doesn't work alone so at the mode here is where you set up the you set it up at this particular space serial monitor begin so it's like you're setting up so that it also starts monitoring for you once then you now whatever thing it's monitoring it should be able to print so it prints for you serial print the line print for me what you're seeing so print for me so it keeps printing even if you want it to print and then you're saying wait for one second and print again wait for one second and monitor and print for me wait for one second monitor and print that's what we are talking about and when it's printing you're able to see it uh from here you can see what is printing here uh on the that is the monitor and, the, and then because remember we we have the law so yeah so print for me what you are seeing that is what the serial monitor is all about thank you i think maybe that's an opportunity also to learn about the serial monitor and you need to start using it very very efficient it will help you uh, once again, thank you so much, and uh, I hope that uh, we will still talk about this some other time. Thank you so much.